Hello everyone, it's me Sanjay Vasu back again for another video. This time science paper for Cambridge Lower Secondary Checkpoint Paper 1, April 2020. Question 1. The list contains the names of different parts of a cell. These are cell membrane, cell wall, and chloroplast. Complete the table by placing ticks in the correct boxes. So we have a cell membrane. So where is it found? Is it only in animal cells or in plant cells or in both? We know that this is found in both animal and plant cells. A cell wall, is it found in animal cells? No. In plant cells, yes. That means it's only in plant cells. Chloroplast. First of all, what is a chloroplast? It is a substance in plant cells which gives the green pigment which contains chlorophyll and helps for photosynthesis. Animals don't do photosynthesis and they don't need a green pigment. So it's only plant cells. Question 2. This question is about the properties of metals. A. Draw straight lines to match the property of a metal with correct use linked to that property. So the property of the metal is sonorous. What do you mean by sonorous? It produces sound. So sonorous means produces sound. And out of these four options, drill bit, bridge, electric wire, and bell, which produces sound? As I just circled, it's the bell. Now strong. What do you mean by strong? It's like it can up uphold many things. And it can uphold many heavy weights. And out of these three, which one can do that? It's a bridge, right? It can upload a lot of cars and trucks and all that when it's traveling across the bridge. So it's quite strong. Now a duct tile. What do you mean by duct tile? It's like flexible. It can be flexible and it is not easy to break. So that is out of the drill bit and electric wires. It's the electric wires, because even though, yes, this bit is not easy to break, you can't bend it. Like, electric wires, you can bend it, but you can't break it so easily. That's called ductile. And for hard, a drill bit, you need to use it to drill into a wall, a cement wall and stuff. So it is quite hard. That's the answer. Question B. Metals are used to make electrical wires because they conduct electricity. And I've done two of these where plastic is put around electrical wires. So we can see the metal of electric wires right here. And we can see labeled on the diagram that plastic is put around electric wires. So why is it put around electric wires? One thing we know is that metals can conduct electricity, which is there in the question. But we know that the human body can also conduct electricity. It's a conductor of electricity. And we don't want to get shocked with electricity, right? That means that we need an insulator so that the electric current doesn't travel from the wires to our body in case we accidentally touch it. So that means that plastic is an insulator. This is used for protecting our body. Now for the second reason. You know, it makes these wires like safe to handle and safe to use because we won't get any shocks or anything. It's similar to the previous point, but it's possible to write. So we won't get electric shocks or it is safe to use. C. Read the sentences about the physical properties of metals. Tick the box next to the correct sentences. All the metals have low melting points. False. All metals have high melting points. Some metals are gases at room temperature. False. They're usually solids and maybe liquids, but they're never gases. All metals conduct heat. This is true. Why? They are metals and they can conduct heat because they are in a solid form and their particles can vibrate easily for conduction of heat. Are metals a brittle? No, they're the opposite. It's malleable. That's the opposite of brittle. That means it can be molded into a shape, but it does not break easily. So the third option is correct. Question 3. Bless the use of the internet to find out about our solar system. 
she finds a very old model for the solar system. So we have this old model here, which I think few of you might have already encountered in some science book or anything. Now, scientists thought that the Earth was at the center. This was like in very olden times, maybe in the BC years, and that was about 2000 years ago. So in the olden times, they used to think all of this. The orbits in the old model show the other objects moving around the Earth, which we know it's not true today except for the moon. All these planets and the sun, they don't move around the Earth. They move around the sun. Hey, scientists today know that the Earth is not at the center of a solar system. What is at the center of a solar system then? Obviously, common knowledge, the sun. B. Write down two other things that are incorrect in the old model. Let's look at the planets. We have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Where's Uranus and where's Neptune? They're not present because they didn't discover it at the time. So Uranus and Neptune are not present. Now for the second point, what else can we say? Okay. Let's look at the orbits. So we have first in the orbit is the moon, then Mercury, Venus, then the sun, then Mars, Jupiter, sun. What? What kind of order is that? Like the orbits are in the wrong order. Like... The moon is revolving around the earth, but these planets don't revolve around the earth. So this moon's not even there in the order. And the sun is also not there in the order. Earth is supposed to be the place with the sun. Now, see, write down one thing that's correct in the old model. Okay, let's see. What's all revolving around the earth? The moon, Mercury, Venus... Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. The moon is revolving around the Earth. Even in the current day. The time you're watching this, the moon is revolving around the Earth. That means that the scientists had guessed correctly that the moon revolves around the Earth. The moon revolves around the Earth. Probably the only thing correct in this model. Question 4. This question is about blood vessels. A. Draw a straight line from each cross section of a blood vessel to the correct letter showing where the blood vessel is found. Over here, we can see the first one. Cross section of blood vessel, which means when you cut it out, it'll look like this. So over here, we can see that there's a small circle of travel of blood and around it, there's a muscular wall. That signifies that... It is blood from the heart. And that means this option goes to A. Now the second one. It's quite big, the blood vessel, and there's less muscular walls around it. It's the opposite of the first one, which means, obviously, it's to the heart, which is the opposite of from the heart. C. Now the third one. It's a very small blood vessels, capillaries, which means that it is in between. It is in the direction of blood flow from and to the heart in between these around in the body places b name the types of blood vessel labeled a and c so the blood vessels we know that carry blood from the heart to the other parts of the body like the lungs and parts like that they're called arteries and that's the name for it now for c What's the opposite? It goes to the heart. The opposite of arteries, veins. Well, I'll explain this a bit more. So the blood from the heart, it goes to the lungs for purification. And impure blood flows to the lungs from the heart. There's impure blood. And that is carried by arteries. Now, to heart, it is pure blood. To the heart from the lungs. 
because the lungs sends pure blood with the oxygen or oxygenated blood to the heart so that the heart can send it to other parts of the body. And veins carry this blood. Question 5. The picture shows three different elements in a stated room temperature. A. Which two of these elements flow easily at room temperature? We know that liquids and gases flow easily. And over here, liquid bromine and chlorine gas. They are liquid and gas at room temperature. Therefore, it is bromine and chlorine. B. What is the chemical symbol for chlorine? Cl. C. Chlorine gas fills the jar. Explain why a gas fills the jar. Tick the box next to the correct explanation. Forces between the particles push them apart. No, it's because like these are not really forces. There are not a lot of forces between gases. The particles are free to move. Technically, that's correct because, you know, they move in a random direction. They move in a random direction. Now, particles can easily be squashed into a small space. Really, that's not a property of gases at all. The particles increase in size to fill the space. Even in solids or liquids or gases, whatever state, even if you consider the other three states, which are really complicated, like plasma. So if you take all of those, none of these can increase in size for the particles as long as they are the same atom or the same element. So this is obviously wrong. So we got the first, third, and fourth wrong. The second one is correct. D. Liquid bromine easily evaporates. Explain what happens to the particles or the molecules when a liquid evaporates. So what happens when a liquid changes into a gas? It evaporates. What happens during evaporation? It's like the particles gain more energy. They gain energy. And what kind of energy? Kinetic energy. Because they move faster. How do they move faster? Because it changes from a liquid to a gas. And the gas particles move faster than a liquid. The liquid is slower. So we can say that when a liquid evaporates, the particles gain more kinetic energy. Not just kinetic, because when the liquid evaporates, it's increasing temperature. It increases in temperature, and therefore it also gains thermal energy. But we need to see the command word. Explain. Usually in explain, we need to give two points because two marks. That means that we can just say that the liquid bonds, the liquid bonds, they break apart. And then they form gas bonds, which are much lighter and much easier to solidify. So the liquid bonds break down to form gas bonds. This releases what kind of energy? Thermal energy. Question 6. Mia investigates sound. She makes a sound using a loudspeaker. The sound is detected by the microphone. A. Describe how the sound travels from the loudspeaker to the microphone. So first of all, the loudspeaker causes vibrations, which in turn cause sound waves to travel to the microphone. Right? And then, this vibrating particles are picked up by the microphone in terms of compressions and rarefactions. Basically, sound waves don't travel in these waveforms or transverse waves. 
They travel in what is known as a longitudinal wave. There's air particles, which are represented by the form of lines, and then they're really tightly packed together at some point, and then they loosen out like this. And then they become more tightly packed, and at a certain point, they become concentrated a lot, and then it loosens up. So basically, these tightens, this place where they tighten, is called a compression. And the place where they will relax is called a rarefaction. Let me just spell it out real quick. So, compression and rarefaction. So, the loudspeaker causes air particles to vibrate around it, and this vibration of compressions and rarefactions causes it to travel in a straight line towards the microphone and the microphone picks up this sound that's why you need to write so the air particles vibrate in the form of compressions and rarefactions to cause the sound to travel in a straight line and be picked up by the microphone. I just why there's the mic. That's the answer. B. Mia draws the wave she sees on the oscilloscope. She makes the sound louder. Draw this wave on the oscilloscope. Alright. We know that a sound wave has amplitude and frequency. Frequency is the number of times we have a down and up in one wavelength. So over here we have 1 and 2. And the amplitude is the height. So from the baseline, you have a height of 3 down and 3 up. So you make it louder, then this amplitude increases. And therefore we can draw something. So we can draw it like it's 4 down and 4 up with each wave. 4 down, 4 up. And stop. So this has a slightly increased amplitude. You can even draw it with 5 down and 5 up. This is also okay. Because we just have to have an increased amplitude, nothing else. Number 2. She makes the sound a higher pitch. Draw this way on the oscilloscope. So it's higher pitch, that means the frequency, frequency increases. And if frequency increases, then we know that there'll be more wavelengths or more full waves in one wavelength. So we can make it the same amplitude, like 3 down, 3 up, but we need to make it something like this so that there are more wavelengths in one. I know I've not done it perfectly, it's not easy to draw this on my app I'm using, but still, you have to make it like the exact same number of ups and downs, like this. So it ends with an up and starts with a down. That's the answer.